Etsy just dropped some brand new features across their Etsy ads function. And today I'm going to walk you through those new features so you know how to use them and how to read them. I'm going to take the complicated topic of Etsy ads and break that down in a way that is easy for you to understand and give you some free information that allows you to take this learning and do it for your own shop if you're trying to understand if Etsy ads are profitable or worth it for you. So let's start with what is Etsy ads. Etsy ads is a feature that you do not have to opt into, but if you would like to get additional visibility across the Etsy platform, you can. And what this allows you to do is for you to show up as a sponsored product across the Etsy results. So for example, if you are scrolling through Etsy and you come across something that says ad by Etsy seller, that means that that person has ads turned on in their account. So that way they're boosting their listings to show up more for people like myself that might be searching for similar types of products. So when you are running an ad, Etsy is gonna make sure to put you in different placements that supports getting more impressions and more views and more clicks and hopefully more purchases to your shop. When somebody actually clicks on one of these products, the seller who is running this ad will incur a charge. That is something that is really important to understand that if you are running ads on Etsy and somebody clicks on your product within Etsy, you are going to be charged for that person getting to your listing even if they do not purchase. Similar to that, uh, there is also offsite ads. So the, what we just talked about is going to be ads that are running in platform. There's also something called an offsite ad. There are qualifications for if you're automatically opted into this or if you can choose to opt out of this. If you have the option, I would recommend staying opted into this if you have interest in it. And what that is, it actually means that you're bringing somebody that was not already on Etsy to Etsy. And so an example of that is if you type in Halloween sweatshirts on Google, you can see that Etsy has so much brand recognition that they are ranking in every single shopping slot at the top of Google for different listings that you and I might be selling. So we can get all of these eyeballs over to our products and to our shop even by just opting into offline ads. And these ads work a little bit differently. So let's say somebody clicks on one of these products, you are not charged for that click, but if somebody clicks on one of these ads and they actually convert and they purchase one of your products, then you will be charged 15% of the revenue and shipping fees for that order. 15% is a very affordable rate to be paying for marketing. Can get this traffic? I would be willing to pay 15% of my revenue all day, every day, if I was getting lots of sales from this placement. So I'm gonna walk you through what this looks like in one of my print-on-demand Etsy stores so you can get a flavor on what to expect here. You can set up your Etsy ads within the marketing Etsy ads category. And this is what my Etsy ads platform looks like in one of my print-on-demand Etsy stores year to date, so from January through September. What's really nice is that they have included this new button here called ROAS. Um, ROAS stands for Return on Ad Spend, which is basically a measure of how much money you're putting into Etsy ads and the revenue you are getting out. So what this data shows me so far is that year to date, I've gotten over 100,000 views. Out of that 100,000 people, 1,400 of them have actually clicked on my product. And out of those 1,400 clicks, I got 91 orders. Those 91 orders cost me $1,000 in investment, and that drove $3,700 of revenue. What is misleading with this information is that return on ad spend, it looks like I'm getting a 3.58. Now, what this means is that for every $1 I put into ads, they give me back $3.58 of revenue. But what is incomplete about this is that this only includes the revenue that you are getting from the product, not any revenue that you might be getting from the shipping fee. I have about an extra 25% of my overall revenue that comes from shipping fees. And so that information is not included into this. So while this says I'm at a 3.58 return on ad spend, that actually means that I'm probably sitting closer to a four, 4.25 because it's not counting any of the revenue that was generated from my shipping fee. So keep that in mind that typically speaking, this is a little bit more of a bleak view than what is actually happening and what revenue is actually being driven by your ad.
ads. The first step to understanding if that is going to be profitable for us is to understand what is our break even return on investment. So to calculate that, we need to understand how much we're paying for our product and how much we're paying for our Etsy fees to see how much is left in that equation that we could in theory pay to acquiring that customer via marketing. So the way I like to do that is take a look at a very specific example, take a look at a product that you are shipping. If you are constantly shipping the same product, it's gonna be easy for you. If you're shipping a lot of different products, choose a product that's kind of like the average um, product that you are shipping most often to give yourself a gauge of if these are profitable for you. So I'm gonna calculate that by going over to this product and typing in a couple of those metrics just so we know how much it costs. So on Printify, this is gonna be a huge seller in uh, the next couple of months, the Gildan 18,000 crew neck. And I'm going to mark down a couple of these profitability metrics. We can calculate this together. So for example, if we are shipping this product, it's going to cost about $13.24 for product cost. If we have Printify premium, which I would recommend you do going into the holiday season. And it's going to cost $7.39 if we are going to ship this in the US, which is where I do the majority of my sales. This is going to be sweater cost. And this is going to be shipping cost. So we take a look at those costs together. That is going to be a grand total of $20.63 for us to ship this. I'm not gonna sell this product typically for any less than like $32. And the reason I say that, if I'm selling this product for about $32, I'm going to have to pay Etsy fees on that, which is about 10% of those fees. And so this is how that kind of maps out if we take a look at those fees. That's going to be about $3.20. So now if we backwards math all of this, we know that the sale price is $32. This means that our profit... $32 minus $3.20 minus $20.63. There will be tax associated with this, but Etsy automatically handles that for you. So I'm assuming this is gonna be like $32 plus tax. So that puts my profit at $8. So $8 of profit, which is actually a 25% margin. Still healthy enough for print on demand, but that means that I only have 25% of this entire sales price, $8 profit to wiggle with if I want to still break even and run marketing for this product. So the way that we calculate our re break even return on ad spend is to actually take this percentage and divide it by one. So by dividing that by one, that tells us that we need to get a 3.91 return on ad spend in order for me to be break even on my ad. So for every $1 I put in, I have to be getting back at least $3.91 in order for me to be not losing money on this. Keep in mind that this is including the 3.91 uh, for shipping and revenue versus what Etsy is going to show is going to be more conservative at just the actual product price. But it gives you a gauge on what you need to see on that Etsy platform in order for it to make sense for your business. There's always a case to be made to be running ads and breaking even. If you think that that is helping getting your products ranked and getting your products viewed, actually driving reviews to your product. But keep in mind that if you, if you did this math and you were coming in at, you needed an eight, 8x return and you're not getting that, you are losing money by running Etsy ads. Now where this math gets really interesting is let's say I've thought up a killer idea, everybody's buying my products and everything is working really, really well and I have a really specific design that nobody else has and I change my sale price to be $40, right? Like I, I'm i doing so well, people are buying it, nobody's knocked me off quite yet. That takes your profit to $15, which is a 38% profit margin, which means you only need to be hitting a 2.62 return on ad spend to be breaking even. So you have more money to play with, more clicks of people that can land on your product before you are actually losing money with your marketing and with your ads. So you can see here that some people are not a fan of running ads because it's not profitable for their business. I have always ran it and tested it with different products that are newer. I'm wanting to try to get more traffic to my shop. I'm wanting to ebb and flow through different seasons. So keep note that that is how you'll understand if you are at least breaking even on your ads and make sure to include an additional boost of revenue here because it's not 
including your shipping revenue if you don't offer free shipping on every order and if you actually are generating any revenue from your shipping. The other thing that is new in the last couple of weeks is that they've rolled out something called campaign. Before, you kind of had to just give it some random guidance on your goal of marketing, which is obviously like, I want to make more money. (laughs) So that was always kind of silly. Um, But it allows you to put in a different strategy that might allow for more revenue or less revenue. And you can see that here. So they give you three different options. Um, One called increase your orders, one called balance your orders with return, and one called increase your return. So the assumption here is that if you have your strategy set like me, I'm okay with this going a little bit crazier, spending a little bit more money, trying to reach new people, gather more data, bring more people to my shop. If I think that in the long run, that is going to help me rank my products faster and launch more products. But if you do not feel comfortable with letting Etsy experiment with your money, I would recommend selecting balance your orders with return or increase your return. This will mean that if you have balanced your orders with return, it's going to try to make sure that as you spend money, you are still getting return on investment coming into your shop. This platform tells you that a break-even ROAS is one. Do not believe that. A break-even ROAS is one. If I put in a dollar and got a dollar back, given that model that I just showed you, I would have lost 75 cents. So I can't rely on this information. You need to make sure you're staying on top of how you're calculating this. So balance your orders with the turn is going to make sure that you're kind of keeping the reins choked back a little bit from Etsy and increase your return should mean that they are being a little bit more selective of who they put your products in front of. So this could be an interesting one for you to test if you want to test ads, but you're not really ready to give them full control of your budget. It's up to you. The other thing they did is they actually gave you more visibility to the keywords that are bringing in traffic to your listing. So if you have interest in taking a look and pausing different keywords or understanding where the views are coming from, I would spend some time taking a look at this. And if you have things that are spending a lot of money, like you're driving a lot of investment to specific keywords and it's just not converting, then go ahead and turn that keyword off. One thing to note here is let's say you're getting a lot of views but nobody's clicking on it, that's okay. It's okay that that happens because you're not actually paying when somebody views your product, you're paying when somebody actually clicks on it. So it's great to get free impressions, it's great to get your product out there, but that could be a sign that if you keep seeing a bunch of views and nobody's clicking on it, you might need to change your mock-up. You might need to change your pricing structure, like whatever it is that's in your product, it's not driving enough people to action on clicking it and wanting to learn more. So keep that in mind that this is a really great way to understand how people are coming to your product, how they're interacting with it. And if you have like a really strong keyword that is performing really well, and driving revenue for you, I would recommend rolling that out as a tag in more of your products or making more listings related to that keyword because clearly whatever you have in that little recipe is working really well in getting people to see your product, click on it, and actually purchase, which is ultimately what we all want. So to recap, Etsy now shows you your return on ad spend ratio in your platform, which is very cool, but a little bit misleading. Remember to add in your shipping revenue. It also allows you to choose a more flexible to more stringent campaign option that helps you control for a higher return on investment versus more volume, more eyeballs, and a lower return on investment, which is exciting. And they allow you to actually see the keywords and turn on different keywords that may not be performing well for you and then turn them back on if you wanna test them again. Hopefully this was helpful for understanding your ad strategy. If so, please leave a comment below and I will catch you on the next one.